Why are you licking my gobstopper? Strike that. Reverse it. Fancy punks! Lick my plate! Rainy! It'll be 10 minutes where it's like a Steven Soderbergh Ocean's Eleven movie. It's all slick and funny and stuff. Then just the most horrific shit imaginable will happen. It's because that's what the fucking movie's about, you asshole. Uh, this fucking guy. The tree of life is freaking awesome. I'm sure you think it is. Made it to black. Oh, you are fucking this up. Beyond slime. Gangster movie douchebag. Well, forget about it. Yeah, forget about it. I just know that you, you already hate Freddy. I don't know why you want to torture him. Jared Leto, man. You're the worst, dude. If you, if, if you ever listen to this, Jared Leto, you are the fucking worst. I'd rather it. watch that dude, the English dude, who looks like he's not done yet. <laughs> this movie is the opposite of getting light. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you to all our listeners who have been listening to us for over a year now. Subscribe to us on Apple iTunes, Spotify, YouTube, and any other platform that has podcasts. Visit our Patreon page, become a Patreon, and get more additional content. Again, we appreciate you listening and keep watching those movies. Now, on with the show. Ladies and gentlemen, Doug Wall, Lee Bridges, and Garrick Lane, this is Tales from the Video Store. to Tales from the Video Store number 74. I'm your host, Garrick. I'm here with River and Doug, and we're here with Lee, kind of, uh, you know, still telephoning, still uh, phoning in his uh, performance, but that's okay. We're all used to that. Yeah. How are we doing? Good. All right. Well, we're pretty good. Thank goodness we got out of Italy and got back into something else. I uh, named our last, it's funny, the uh, title of number 73 was Giving the The Boot boot, to the Boot. (laughs) I'm glad we're out of there. I don't know why it didn't work, but it just didn't. Well, I don't know. We'll see if uh, this new sci-fi worked with the new movie. This week we did The Void. Who wants to start us off? I'll start it off. Okay, go ahead. I guess I kind of put it on the list. It's 2017, another Canadian made film it seems like we've done nothing but canadian movies for like the last six episodes or so and this is another one well that's because america's not making any movies right now i don't think anybody is but that's okay anyway this movie uh starts off there's there's like a like a house and you see two people run out of this house and a guy and a girl and the guy kind of gets away and the girl gets tackled by these two guys that are chasing him out of the house and they don't really say anything they just pour gasoline on her and set her on fire mm-hmm. and uh, then it goes to a cop who's kind of halfway awake half asleep in his patrol car he's getting ready to call it a night it's sometime in the morning that you don't really know and you see this guy who'd run out of the house kind of stumble out into the into the road so the cop gets him and takes him to this this hospital and they're moving this hospital to a different place so there's only a a handful of people at the hospital working especially this time of night and uh, from there it just gets crazy Um, it seems like a movie that was made in like 1986 you know it's not like a throwback movie it just looks and feels like John Carpenter called he wants his movie he, back. He wants the thing back? Yeah. <laughs> the thing and Assault on Precinct 13. Yeah. Yeah. I, 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 felt, I felt like it was Hellraiser meets the thing. All completely carbon copied. Yeah. I, I mean, you know, there's some weird looking, I, I guess, people that, that worship this kind of thing, this group. There's a doctor there that's kind of the head of this whole thing, and uh, they look scary, you know. And these the the two guys who had set this woman on fire, they later show up at the hospital, and and apparently it's like a like a big thing that's happening. It's not just happening there; it's happening all over. And uh, a takeover. Yeah, it, it really small budget, I think, but I like all the practical effects. I mean, some of yeah. them, you know. It was awesome. 
Yeah, I like the way it looks. I like the feel of it. Um, and I like the end of it. I like the way it ends. You know, I'm not going to give it away if you've never seen it, but... Dude, when that one dude, like, came up on his back and started walking on his hands yeah. and stuff, dude, I was creeped out. Yeah. I, I'm going to be honest, man. I, I, I was, I, I'll give it a 50%. Uh, I like the practical effects. 50 Dude, I, 50%. I, I felt like this guy totally watched the thing in Hellraiser and said, how can I make a movie that has both of these elements in it? Lee, am I, am I completely off? Because I know you disagree with everything I say. Well, that, well, that's true because you just say a lot of disagreeable things. <laughs> but uh, uh, you're not wrong, but I don't necessarily see that as a negative. Like, the uh, the first, like, the... There's a lot of assault on Precinct 13 in there where the, the building's being shut down, people getting trapped in. It's like Doug was talking about last week, he felt that Blood Quantum could have been more of a siege movie. Right. Where the people just trapped in one building. And this movie has that. And it's like very Carpenter-esque, you know, very, uh, the, lot, the sort of tickle monsters from the thing, you know, definitely wears its uh, influences on its sleeve. But I like, also like Doug said, I don't think that's a bad thing. I don't see that as a, a negative. Is it the most original movie? Uh, no, but compared to most horror movies nowadays, it's I, I, if you give it a fifty, I'll give it a seventy-five. All right. If you give it a fifty. Well, what would you? I think? mean, it's not it's not great, but it is. It's very well done. Yeah. Uh, what do you think, River? I think it was it was okay. Um, the. I think there was a little bit too much gore. I think it was pretty gory there at the beginning. Um, and then it stopped for a little bit, and at the end it got pretty, um, uh, a little bit more gory. Um, I thought the practical effects were awesome, though. They were pretty good. Um, the monsters looked great. Um, it was okay acting. I don't really see much. I don't really know how to grade that. Because I'm not really good at acting That's skills. Right. Yeah, you, you've got a lot I of would skills. say I would concur with the little fella about the acting. You know, kind of like. But this is a low budget. When you get low right, budget, right. you're going to get two empty chairs. You're going to get right. I, you know, like the guy who played the the doctor, like the main guy, was very good, and everybody oh, yeah. else He's was. He's the only guy I remember from other movies. Right. The rest of them were not that great, but. You know, a lot of times the, the story itself or what's going on is, like, enough to kind of get past it. And after the initial, like, after the first, like, five minutes when they're all at the hospital and you're like, they kind of sort themselves out a little bit, I stopped really kind of caring about the acting at that point. I was like, let's just watch the story and see what kind of happens. Right. And, and I dug it, man. I mean, it's... I thought it was pretty good. Cool. It, it was gory. It was disgusting. Like, the, the, yeah. the creatures were freaking wretched. Like, I'm yeah. like... And they start beating that one up. I remember looking over at River at one point in time, and River just had his eyes like... <laughs> oh, he had his <laughs> hand on his head, on his face, and he was just like, oh, my God. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, I really probably shouldn't have let him watch this. <laughs> oh, I mean, I've, I'm sure he's seen worse. He yes. probably has. What? You have your hand up like you're in class. What you got? Um, I feel it was it. It didn't really remind me of a horror movie. I think it was more of like a thriller, like trying to like spook you. Sometimes it wasn't trying to really be scary. Well, true, but you're very young. You didn't live. You didn't grow up in the '80s like us three, and and get these movies like The Thing. This this totally had The Thing written all over it. Mm Mm-hmm. And I'm, then, I'm fi- but I'm fine with it. So this, yeah. So the end when they pushed him through the triangle was that a parallel universe? Where did they go? That was, I don't know, man. Where do you yeah. think they went? Where Looked like they, they went to another planet, and there was a big ass uh, pyramid there, huh. which were the same. Pyramids that were on the white shrouds that all the uh, people were wearing that surrounded the hospital. So it's some kind of otherworldly something. I, I mean, right. an ambiguous ending like that, it's up to your imagination. It's, it's very much like the color out of space. It's like. That's exactly what I was going to say. It's, it's whatever like you want it to be. It, it doesn't have exactly. to be. Well, that's planet 69241. 
Dash zero. Who gives a shit? Yeah. <laughs> it's kind of yeah, like that. It's whatever you think it is. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So what's the consensus? Oh. I would, if I knew people who were into movies like this, I would definitely tell them to watch it. Right. Like, if I knew someone who was a big Carpenter fan, big 80s horror fan, I would definitely tell them to check out The Void. Yeah. You know. Yeah. It is. And they actually, they did, they, uh, they raised the money uh, for the movie traditionally, but then once they started shooting, they realized that they didn't have enough money to for the effects they wanted. So then they crowdfunded just the effects budget, which is how they got such good effects in a movie as low budget as this. Really? That's, so that's stop, interesting. That's not part of the way through to raise more money. Well, that moves them up to a 60% that they crowdfunded their special effects. That's kind of cool. That's why they look the way that they look, kind of dark. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. That's cool. Yeah. Uh, Jeremy Gillespie and uh, Stephen Kostansky were the directors. Um, uh, I know that Jeremy Gillespie's like an art guy. He did uh, worked his art direction in The Shape of Water, Pacific Rim, Chow Boys. So he must have he must have done a lot of the art direction himself. He must have you know just that may it may have been one of those situations where him and Steven created the monsters first and then were drawing on like the monsters and said we got to do a movie around this. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah. It, it might have been that way. It might have turned out that way. Yeah, you might be right, because the Siege movie is one of the easiest types of movies to do, because you just have one location. You get, like, a defunct, you know, a, a school, a hospital, a, you know, an office building, whatever, and it's just all there. Yeah. That's why the, so many low-budget movies use that concept, is it's just, you know, one night, it all takes place at night, so you don't have to, you know, one building. But, yeah, no, I does it. You know, I give it more respect that it was a crowdfunded film. That's pretty cool. I'll give them that because it's hard, man. It's hard to raise money for anything. These Canadians, yeah. man. I'm telling you, man. I know this is too like Blood Quantum. The same thing. Maybe we should go to Canada and get our movie made. Now That's what thinking. it's about. <laughs> That's what it's about. <laughs> um, I feel like the ending was very bizarre, though. That was um, that was really what I liked about the ending was it was pretty like. It kind of creeped the the ending kind of creeped me out a little bit because it was like it was something that you probably like something sci-fi. It really showed you like bizarre sci-fi stuff. It showed yeah. you what really how to be a bizarre sci-fi film and a thriller because it just it just all all the crap went down at the ending and it just I really liked the ending though. The ending was pretty good. Yeah, yeah. and there's also uh, there were also a lot of plot references to the Prince of Darkness, your favorite John Carpenter film. Mm. There was a lot of that. I just felt like the hell, like the guy, the doctor, when he came out of the the triangle, man, he looked like Pinhead without the pins. I'm just like, I don't know. <laughs> he but, was just pulling his skin off, man. Right. Okay, so he's pulling his skin off. <laughs> you know, that's how they do it. It's a splatter movie. Yeah. 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 That's how they do it. Oh, and by, and by the way, yeah. Kostowski and Gillespie, uh, a burnt, ci- a lit cigarette won't start gasoline. Say, so. are you oh, that, that fucking guy all of a sudden? Yeah, I, God. <laughs> God. <laughs> so there you go, the void. Hey, oh, really? Watch it. Seriously, that, that I, I didn't work? like it more. Oh, than I ruined the movie before. <laughs> what do you say? I don't know. I couldn't hear because you were rambling. <laughs> say that again, Lee. I said the cigarette thing won't work. That ruined the movie for me. Yeah, I know. I it's mean, bullshit now. Now it's zero percent. Yeah. Ruined. So yeah, listen. I I know I'm giving it a hard time, but I I would I would ref, I would refer to anybody to watch for the simple you, reason. Do you have something against Canadians or Canadian <laughs> cinema? Because you've been doing yeah, this I've, every <laughs> Canadian movie. I liked Blood Quantum. You're I like liked, I don't like this is. Crap, and then by the end of the conversation, you've completely about faced. Well, What's the deal? You guys are smarter criti- critics than me. <laughs> you, look, just, I, look, you don't like Canada. I'm very just like, saying. Okay, maybe I, I'm just very impulsive, and when I watch a movie, I'm like, I don't like it. And then maybe somebody talks me off the ledge. You know, maybe I don't Tony Scott off the bridge. Maybe I don't. <laughs> maybe. Maybe. <laughs> So, but somebody's got to be there to talk me from not jumping. Yeah. So you guys tend to do that sometimes. You talk me off from jumping. Like I said, I gave it a 50%, and then I gave it another 10% to know that it was crowdfunded. 
It's a good movie. Watch it. it you're going to get what you get. If you like 80s horror films, if you like John Carpenter, watch The Void. Yeah. If you don't, don't watch it. You won't like it. Period. Yeah. Good. What up? Great. Well, I can't what imagine you- someone who isn't a fan of that checking out this movie. Oh, yeah. Like, I couldn't imagine my wife. My wife wouldn't... Sh- right when they start beating that whatever... What was her name? Barbara. Barbara. When Barbara starts turning into some sort of tentacle monster, yeah, yeah, my wife would have gotten up and left. Yeah. Say love me. Yep, that's right. <laughs> that's right. Okay, well, did you watch anything else? I did. I did watch some stuff. <laughs> God. All I right. Did. Cool. It'll give me another 50, 45 minutes. No, 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 because uh, I watched three things. Really? Just three? Yeah. Wow, you must have been busy this week. Not really. Um, so we'll go and I watched Birds of Prey. Oh, uh, did okay. You? Margot Robbie and uh, Ewan McGregor. Yeah, got uh, about Harley Quinn and uh, look. I, I'm okay. sure. I'm sure. I probably come across as being like sexist, but it's a. It's terrible. It is it's a terrible, terrible it's movie. It's That's... just, it's terrible. I don't care who the main characters are in it. It's just not, it, I don't like the way that it was told. I didn't like them starting a story and then reversing themselves. And I think they did that like three different times in the movie. She would start to tell a story and then would have to go and backlog go it. into these little weird things. I just, man, I... And then, you know what's, you know what's sad? This is going to sound sexist. You know what's really sad? She wasn't even hot. How do you do that? How can you not make Margot Robbie hot? Because she was better in Suicide Squad. She looked pretty in Suicide Squad. Suicide Squad, or whatever. Yeah. What's that? What's that, Lee? Yeah, they weren't interested. It was an anti-male gaze movie. They didn't want her to be hot. Well, okay, I guess. They well, thought Lee... she looked too hot in Suicide Squad. I'm being honest. That was like, you know, that was the, the mission. Was her to be for neutral? Yeah. Well, they they thought she was too they, sexualized in Suicide Squad. Well, they did it. They definitely did it because I watched it. Shot. I watched it because of her performance in Suicide Squad, and that's not what I got in this. Yeah. And uh, I, I, it's just it's not good. It's just not good, man. It's not good. It was not good. I didn't think anybody did a good job in it. The chicks that were with her, yeah. like even McGregor was. It wasn't even a good girl power movie. It's not like Bombshell. Bombshell's a good girl movie, it, right? Well, like I'm sitting there watching this with Jody, and I paused it, and I was like, "Okay, dude." I was like, "Does like does this kind of movie make you feel more empowered as opposed to?" Something like bombshell, yeah. and she just she just looked at me and she was like, "You're just thinking too much about this." And I was like, "Well, I'm just curious why this even got made because this is like lollipops and fairy dust, you know, on a social kind of yeah. like a really poorly done social commentary. Just leave it out, dude. You know, if you want to make something to empower women, I just." I don't know how much good something like this really does. Yeah, it wasn't right. good. This, to me, it like gives a, it's like, hey, we made this, it's like fake. It's like, ha ha ha, we made it just for the girls. And Jody's like, this is fucking terrible. I was like, okay. As long as you see that. Oh, it's terrible. You know, it's almost like placating to like a certain group of people and it's just... Like, if I were in that demographic, if I was a woman, I would have been like... That actually made me mad that they made it like that. Yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah. That's how that's right, how bad that's how bad I thought it was. I only liked one thing about that movie, which was the soundtrack. I loved the soundtrack. I think it was really cool. I like like I just thought it was cool. It made you like an it is it, it sounds like I just like the soundtrack. That's really all I can what say. Else I you got? What else? Because I know you didn't like it. Um it had too much cussing. For a DC movie, I think it, it had way too much. It had an F-bomb like every second. Every five it, like It's such lazy writing. I hate but it. But why, why did they even do it? Right. It didn't add anything to the they movie, eat the, dude. Eat, eat, eat the ah, fucking A, fuck C, fuck fucking A, fuck fuck. And I'm like, ah! Like, dude. Well, I was 
was like, isn't this PG thirteen? Bothers me, happened? like when the f bombs bother me, like you, you got a problem. Like when I'm sitting there going, Ugh. Yeah. One scene, I actually got kind of disturbed. And I wanted to close my eyes because it was that scene that he made her get on the table and strip and dance. It, yeah. I got disturbed well, by that. Well, I think sure, that was a little bit pushy. You're Twelve, and you shouldn't be watching movies like this. <laughs> well, it's it, <laughs> wasn't it PG thirteen? No, it was R. No, it was R. But it was R. But the parent guide, the parent guide said, "There's one scene where stripping is simulated, but nothing's shown." And then there was. 79 F-bombs. And I, I knew there was something I didn't like about it. It was the lack of nudity. Yeah, yeah. And, and Argo Robbie just being completely unattractive. Like, make her attractive. Borderline annoying. I, I that just, last shot when she smiles and she winks, I'm like, ugh. Yeah, and I, like, went back to the big, uh, the <laughs> big short yeah. and Wolf of Wall Street, and I'm like, how do they do that? That is Hollywood. That you can make a woman that beautiful, that to the point where I I looked at her when she winked at me right in the camera when she broke the third wall and winked at us. I'm like, Ugh. don't you even look at me. <laughs> Maybe that would have been better if I'd have been drinking. Yeah, don't look at me. Don't you even look at me. That was not yeah. good at all. I heard the Wolf of Wall Street what? has the most cuss words in like it's all close. movies. It's pretty close. So that what? No, what else, hold movie. on, slow down. I'm waiting on Lee. I can't see Lee, so I keep well, interrupting him. This is what Lee. Lee, discuss. I'll put my Hold hand a up second. and tell mm-hmm. you when you can when, talk. When we started talking about doing this completely uh, virtual, Lee's complaint is we're talk, we'll talk over each other or we'll be waiting for somebody to say something. This is one of those moments where Lee is right. This is happening. I can't see Lee, so I'm talking. Sorry, Lee. Go ahead, man. Arthur bro, the problem is they tried to duplicate Deadpool without a movie as good as Deadpool. They were trying to jump on the R-rated comic book movie bandwagon. Yeah. In a completely... First of all, they, they, this was, I think, this young lady's second movie as a director, and her first movie was a drama, like a, a small independent drama. And then they had, after they finished the movie, they had to bring in the guy who directed the John Wick movies and have him redo all fight scenes. So obviously, they have during editing, they knew they had a turd. You know. And, uh... It was definitely a turd. It just... Yeah, that, I mean, yeah, like when you bring in a different director to do all your redo all your action in an action movie, you know, and they're just like when Spider Man. The reason the first Spider Man movie was so successful is Sam Raimi been directing movies for twenty years before that. This trend of giving people huge movies on like their second or third try as a director is a terrible idea. You know, I mean. Yeah, like, uh, the reason Peter Jackson nailed the Lord of the Rings movies is because he would he was really good at directing movies when he got that chance. You know. They're, they're just like, uh, not just, and it has nothing to do with her being a woman. This is, you know, this happens to male directors all the time. They make one small movie, then they get a chance to make something huge, and they just shit the bed. You know, so I don't, like, I don't want this to come off as like an anti-woman thing, because it's, just, it's a, just a... Film uh, studios being sort of ashamed to make genre movies and getting dr- uh, dramatic directors to make movies they shouldn't be making. You know. Because she doesn't have the skill set. It doesn't have anything to do with her being a woman, just has her to do with being incompetent. Yeah. You know. And, uh, like, uh, so, the DC uh, Cinematic Universe, is, it's another failure. Like, and I, have, and I have no interest in seeing it. You know. No, I won't, unless I get talked. I, I won't watch it. Well, th- I would have never rented this anyway. But Jody went. Right. To, Jody went to the Red Box and she brought back two movies, and they were both fucking horrific. Yeah. The first was Birds of Prey, and the second one was somehow a worse movie, but a better viewing experience. If that. Even though that doesn't really make any sense, she brought home Fantasy Island from 2020, a Bloomhouse uh, movie about fantasies and such, uh, with Michael Pena and Maggie O, and it just, God, man, it was a way worse movie. Than Birds of Prey, but for some reason I think I enjoyed it a little bit more, and I don't know why. Because it's 
horrific. It should have never been made. When I watch movies that are this bad, I think, man, how many homeless people could have eaten on the budget of this piece of garbage? Like, it's that bad. I don't even know why it even got made. It's that bad. Yeah. You know, and and Fantasy Island was a show that, you know, I used to watch when I was a kid. I loved it. I thought it was super creepy. And this was just a really odd... It's like a... It's like a bad try at making an episode, like a two-hour or 90-minute uh, Fantasy Island episode or like a Twilight Zone episode. But, like, when they do these remakes, man, they feel the need to, like, explain too much and to, like, clutter up the storylines with all these, like, ha-ha-ha, we, it's this or it's that, and I just... Stick to a simple story, and maybe you'd have something if you really concentrate on the story, instead of like concentrating more on trying to make it like tricky, because it was just, it was just terrible. Man. It's as bad a yeah. movie. Those two movies were so bad. I lost faith a little bit. I was like, man, god dang, really? DC sucks, dude. Like this bad? Why? Um, and then I. I started looking around on Shudder and I saw a little heading thing for a movie that kind of looked a little bit like The Void a little bit called Housewife. Mm-hmm. And so I put it on. Housewife was the best movie I watched. It's better than The Void. It's better than Birds of Prey. Better than Fantasy Island. It's the best movie I I watched all week. And it is very disturbing and very sensual and very nasty. And I like it. Housewife, let me get this one. Very odd. Uh, it tells the story of this, this woman. She, uh, she has these dreams from when she was a child. Her and her sister are sitting there playing at the beginning of the movie and her sister has her period and she starts freaking out and the mom comes in there and just loses it and picks her up and drowns her in a toilet and kills the husband and this little girl escapes and now she's an adult who's married but she still is having these visions of all this. So some friends of theirs talk about this cult called the Umbrella of love and mind and they want her to come to this thing it's like at a hotel you know where they this guy's going to give like this big speech about talking about you know his religion if you want to call it that and he sees her and like calls her out and is able to basically like get inside of her mind and helps her kind of get through her dreams which are ultimately nightmares. And then it goes then it goes full on like uh, color out of space towards the end. It just goes nuts and there's like tentacles coming out of the sky and, and it's like the end of the world kind of scenario. Uh, by the time this guy who's kind of the leader kind of gets in with her. But The story, it's kind of confusing. It's one of those where they used all foreign actors. Like, there's people from from Argentina and France, and they're all having them speak in English. And Mm -hmm. that kind of made it kind of hard to follow. Because these people were all good actors, I think, but when you have them trying to speak in English, just it kind of interrupted the flow of the movie a little bit. But the director's t- Turkish, I believe. Yeah, yeah. Can yeah. can ever 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 all ever and all. Yeah. Um, dude, it looks so good, Garrick. You you need to check this out simply because of how how beautiful it is. The cinematography is outstanding. Is it a, is it an opera of cinema? Well, I mean, look, it looks great when it needs to look great. 
I mean, and that that was my biggest thing. I was like, damn, this movie looks so good. Just the different shots this guy uses and the use of lighting, it just, it has its own look to it. It's a little hard to kind of, I had to, even though it's in English, I had to subtitle it because I was losing stuff in the accents of these people, if that makes sense. Um, But all in all, man, really unique, interesting movie that I, I would recommend. And if you like the void, it kind of has oh shit, kind of has some void esque properties, you know, with this cult and their members, and and kind of bring upon this whatever it is, this interdimensional end of days, if you will. But neat movie, one of the best ones I've seen on Shutter, to be quite honest with you. So, like I said a couple weeks ago, you know, you might. Step in a couple landmines on there, but about one out of every few of them's worth seeing, and this was a gem. It really was. I would recommend it to both you guys, all you guys. Uh, how about next to uh, House of, what's it called? Hagazusa? Yeah, Hagazusa. It looks as good as that. Hagazusa was fantastic. I know how much you loved it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Anything else? Uh, the only other movie I watched is one that I had picked for um, Housewife for our uh, pick of the week for the manager's pick of the week. I didn't know if anybody else had brought anything. If you, so I've got well, one. Hold on, just wait for that. Wait a minute. This this movie's got terrible reviews. Well, I bet if you looked up the void, it probably does too. Yeah, that's pretty good. But that's this was cool. a this was a better movie than the void. Housewife. Yeah, it's on. It's on Shutter. All right, I'm gonna check it out. All I'm right, find time this week. Okay. Anyway, I'm sorry. That's all good. What'd you watch, Lee? I watched. Well, the first thing I watched was a movie. I believe it came out last year called Lucky Day. And it's the first movie Roger Avery directed since getting out of prison for manslaughter, and it is terrible. What's it called? It is just Lucky Day. Lucky Day. Yeah. Uh. Guy, uh, you know, all, all in other starts, you know, the guy getting out of prison, just like Roger Avery. But he, uh, this guy's just a thief. He didn't murder someone with his car. Uh, and uh, he gets out of prison. He's a, uh, he's a uh, safe cracker. Mm. He gets out of prison. He's got a, and got to check in with his parole officer and all that stuff, and you know, meet up with his wife. But then Crispin Glover shows up. who's this French hitman who wants to kill him. Uh, for something that happened years before. And like I said, the movie's terrible, but Kristen Glover looks like he's having the time of his life. He just drives around in a lowrider shooting grenades at people. Like, it's just, you know, he's the only good thing about it. And he does a terrible French accent. And uh, just, it's just, it, those sort of post-pulp fiction movies like Two Days in the Valley or Killing Zoe, you know, Roger Avery's first movie directed, it's a lot of that, but just not as good. Yeah, it's just it's you know I don't know uh, maybe uh, maybe the next movie he makes will be decent maybe he just need to get this out of his system you know but it's terrible it really is mm. the only good thing about it is uh, uh, Clifton uh, Clifton Collins Jr. plays the parole officer and he's just he's great you know uh, I love that guy and everything but yeah uh, if you want to see it skip it like it's not worth watching. Just don't even bother. Don't even watch. Yeah, no. It's it's just, yeah. Okay. But uh, other than that, I watched a documentary called uh, "Making of the Apes" about the basically the uh, the special effects artist who, you know, on the original Planet of the Apes. You know, it all that you know. Uh, the artist who you basically created that makeup, you know, which is pretty much the same style of makeup we use today. And eventually, him working for the CIA, like you know. John Goodman played that character, uh, played that guy in uh, Argo. And just basically, it was a documentary about his life. You know, the special effects artist who, and it was it was very interesting. If you're interested in like the history of movie making, it, it goes into it. You know, uh, just about how like that affected everything. Like you know, plenty like as far as like it was the sort of Star Wars of the sixties. You know, uh, was that and, where was uh, that all? And that's on Prime, Making of the Apes. And uh, the only other thing I watched besides that, I actually watched this about a week, uh, I meant to mention this on last week's show, but I completely forgot. 
Somebody I watched on Prime called Across 110th Street. Bless you. And uh, it's sort of listed as a black exploitation movie from the early 70s, but it's really not. It's it's one of the best crime dramas of the 70s. I, I'd never seen it before, but it was amazing. Did you watch you watching that Garrick across the hundred tenth street? It. I thought it was fantastic. But I, I I just kind of started it just to have something to kill time with. I wasn't even really like the first couple minutes. I wasn't really paying attention. But then like once they got into the the guys robbing the mob guys at the beginning, I was like, you know, I said, like, damn, that was pretty good. And, I, and then like you know, it has Anthony Quinn in it, Yaff and Kodo. Like the cast is great. Oh yeah. You know, it's basically like a big studio made black exploitation movie, but it's you know. It's way better than all, like, you know, if you want to compare it to, like, you know, Shaft and all those, it's way better than those movies, to, to me. Oh, I it's a it. really well, really well-made movie. I loved it. I just, yeah. I, I think we both forgot to say that last week, because I yeah, watched that last did. week, too. And I had watched and it, the, all, I watched it based on your Facebook post, because I had seen it on your Facebook post, and I was like, well, that just looks good. Yeah. So, I was like, yeah, I'm going to check that out. Yeah. And, and it's not really, like... The thing I would compare it to most would be the HBO show The Wire. Yeah. Because it's not really like a heist movie or a cop movie. Like, everything that happens is going to happen. Like, these these characters are all doomed to whatever's going to happen to them. Like, the like the, 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 the poor people who, who decide to, you know, sort of break out of their life and rob the mob guys, they're not going to make it. The mob guys are sort of, you know, like, they're stuck in that life. The, the cops are sort of, you know, everybody's sort of just, you know, they're sort of doomed to do whatever whatever's going to happen to them in the movie, just because of their lot in life. So it's just a really well-made crime drama. And, and the fact that it's not listed as like one of the great crime movies of the 70s is a shame. But that's all I watched. Cool. Uh, well, River and I watched everything I watched, River watched. We did it all in one day. We had a day where no, there was nobody else around. Oh, a father-son movie afternoon. Yeah, it was. Uh, so, River, you introduce our the movies that we watched. Um, well, we're going to start with the one we first went with, uh, Gretel and Hansel from 2019. Yeah. 2019. Um, I loved it. I think it was a good movie. Um, not a lot of gore um, until about an hour in, and... Um, and we all know that scene. Well, no, if you watched it, you know the scene that I'm talking about. Um, but it's a little bit slow at the start, but it picks up and it gets really good. It feels like The Witch. Yes. It feels much like The Witch. The cinematography is phenomenal. Mm-hmm. Uh, the suspense and the creepiness of it all. Like, there's just the scene he's talking about. This, one, this girl's imagining stuff and they... Oh, did you? Uh, a couple of weeks ago and just... Really? Got lost in the show. Oh, yeah, dude, that yeah. crazy. So, talk about, what did, you, what did you... The end sucked. The end almost ruined the movie for me. Uh, it was fine. I, and I liked the girl, Sophia Lillis. Yeah. Who was in Beverly the in movies. It? Yeah. I, I, I think she's a really good actress. I think she's one of those that'll get better, you know, if she gets older. I thought it was a cool take on the story. I didn't... I didn't hate it. It was better than I anticipated it being. Oh, absolutely, without a doubt, it was. Uh, it was much better than I anticipated that it was going to be. Really I, creepy in some yeah, parts. Yeah, you know, and it felt like the witch when she pulled the hair like out of her witch. mouth. Lot, you know, all the shots in the woods. And yeah. The weird. The music. The undertone. The shoes out on the trees. Yeah, the, and just the the uh, the lady. Um, the, the, uh, the Alice, main witch, or yeah, yeah, Alice Creed, who plays the main witch, Ugh. just creepy. Yeah. But well, I liked it. I didn't like the end, like the whole, you know, the where she went on her own, the, how it ended. But I think it was, I think it was fine. I think the oh, sorry, uh, you guys it was one? fine. No, I, I, I said it was fine. Yeah, Agreed. it's not a masterpiece, but it was pretty good. I was impressed with what I saw. Um, one thing that. I'm not saying I, I'm going to do this anytime soon, but if I would have directed it, I would have ended it off where the witch put the little boy, cooked the little boy, and put it on her plate to eat. And I, I would have ended it right there. And it, it, I think it would have been better than well, having her go out on her own, moving trees with her hands and letting everyone free. Uh, fair enough, fair enough. And that, that would have led us to our next uh, movie that we watched, The Lodge. Yes. Anybody heard of The Lodge? I've, I've heard of it. 
Uh, it, it is, uh, you know, amazingly enough, it is a new Hammer movie. And it starts off really good because it shows Alicia Silverstone blow her brains out in the first four minutes of the movie. Uh, very creepy. Uh, I, it, when is this from? The, uh, this is from 2019. The, so here's the problem. The problem is it was very good. But the writing was lazy. So I couldn't imagine if they would have actually really worked on the writing. They would have developed the characters a little bit better. It would have been fantastically good. Uh, another, uh, Jaden Martell from, the, from It was in it. Um, it's about, you want to, oh, well, I'll, I'll explain it. Um, uh, uh, oh. uh, hold on, a father. Movie sets up, Alicia Silverstone is looking in the mirror and she's crying. She takes her two kids home. Her husband says, I want a divorce. I'm moving in with, what's her name? Um, her name is Sarah, but... Grace. I, Grace, she's yeah, Grace, yeah, 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 sorry, sorry. So she's moving in with Grace. She wants, he wants a divorce. The next scene shows Alicia Silverstone blow her brains out. So then it cuts, then we fade out, we show the funeral of mom, and the two kids are stuck with douchebag dad who says, hey, we're going on a vacation with my new wife, I need you to, or my soon-to-be wife, I need you to spend some time with her. Okay, and then in that same conversation, son goes, the psychopath? They look up on the internet, they find that Grace was a little kid and was a part of a cult, kind of like the one in San Diego where everybody killed themselves and put duct tape to send sin over their mouths. And, she, and then they show this video camera and they're following around and then they go into a mirror and you see this little girl and she's got a gun. And So apparently she's had a lots of, Grace has had lots of mental issues. Okay, so here's the problem. <laughs> Whether you're a douchebag dad or not, his idea, his plan was this. We're going to go get a cabin in the woods. I've got to work. So you can spend some time with my two children bonding, because you're a psychopath, uh, with my two kids out in the middle of nowhere uh, while I work, and I'll be back in five days. I don't care how shitty of a father you are. Number one, uh, your wife blew her brains out because you were having an affair and said you wanted to divorce. You're not going to turn around and have your two poor, poor children who just lost their mother who blew her brains out in their house. You're not going to turn around and go, oh, meet the girl that made this happen. You're just not going to do that. And furthermore... And is replacing your mom. Right. And furthermore, you're not going to put them... If he's, she's got serious mental issues, and she clearly did, and he clearly knew... Are you going to put them in a situation where they didn't have a car or any? You're going to seclude them in a cabin somewhere for five days, like, dude? I would not, dude. I there's sometimes, man. And I'm gonna be honest right here. There's, I, I love my wife. There's sometimes, man, when she's in a bad mood, I don't want to leave her children with her because she's in a crappy mood, and I feel like she there. Yeah. If if I leave her, she's going to yell at Kaylee. She's going to yell at somebody, and it's going to be very uncomfortable just because she's in a shitty mood. I would never leave my kids with somebody like that. So the, anyway, make a long story short, I had, the, the movie in, in general is pretty good. The problem is, is that would never happen. And, it, and it's exactly what happens. He finally shows up. He shows up and all hell has broken loose. And then, the, then you get this surprise ending, of course, where I don't want to ruin it for people, but because the ending is probably the only thing that saves the movie, saves the writing. But I would... I would say you should give it a go. You guys really should give it a go and tell me what you think. What's it's available it on? on Hulu. Um, I really, when I looked at it, I thought it would be uh, some problem where uh, the kids went crazy and tried to kill Grace because she got replaced. But then I watched it, and, I, and it, it's kind of her coming back to herself in her old past and making her... Good insane, and her that being trapped in a kid's house, that, that's what really, like, I was like, oh, this is going to go, stuff is about to go down. Yeah, and, and, it, it, and it, it's very simple, like, like I said, it's lazy writing, the way they set some of the stuff up, and I just, you know, at the end of it, it was like, oh, the ending, you're like, oh, that's kind of cool and creepy, and it ends really great, but I'm like, man, you don't, the problem is, is 
uh, Grace, you don't really know anything about her besides she's a psychopath. So you don't sympathize with her. You don't think, I mean, and the whole time I'm sitting there going, and this is a good dad. He's not on drugs. Yeah. He drives a Wagoneer and he has a huge house. He's a smart dude. Yeah. You just don't do it. Like this, and of course you're like, oh, suspension of disbelief. Dude, a dad would never do what this dad did. This dad, oh, right. I would never do that to my children. Ever. Ever, 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 ever. And it's just kind of like, oh, well, we're just, we need to write, we're just going to write it this way and set it up this way because that makes it easy. It just makes it easy for everything to happen. So anyway, there you go. But check it out. Let me, tell me what you guys think. The Lodge on Hulu. What else? Me? We watched something else, didn't we? Or was that it? Um, I watched something else. You weren't in the room. And I don't even need to talk about it because it was terrible. Godzilla King of the Monsters. Terrible movie. Not very good. Terrible. Oh, yeah. Good effects. Pretty good effects. Terrible ending. Good, Okay acting. Lee, uh, Lee, Lee and Doug both said this about this movie, River. Uh, the monsters were the only part you cared about. Is that correct? That's good. an accurate. Yeah. yeah. The, the, the people in it, you don't care about. It was just the... Yeah. There are so many human characters. You're like, why is that person there? Yeah. I don't need the eighth person's point point of view about something like the eighth new introductory character in this like yeah. after about the first five I was like, Oh god, just can I fast forward this to just when the monsters fight? Because yeah. I can't stand the people anymore. Yeah, that's yeah. right. Terrible. Ghidorah is the coolest thing ever. I loved the way the monsters looked. Ghidorah was my favorite thing ever. And Boston got just slammed too, dude. <laughs> Jeez. Uh, uh, all right. Well, that's uh, that's it for then uh, the, for the week. Uh, you have a manager's choice. That's right, ladies and gentlemen. It's this week's tales from the video store manager's pick. There coming, we go. Coming through strong. Wait. This one, no. <laughs> I just saw your manager's pick. That's a piece of shit. When was the last time you watched it? I'm just kidding. I don't even know. You ever even seen it? That's freaking awesome. I hadn't seen it in a long time. Go ahead. All Tell right. us your manager's choice. To introduce our manager's choice for this week. 1979's Phantasm. Woo! I found it on uh, Prime Bit, and I think... Uh, the Bad Robot Production Company that's owned by... They remastered Yeah. Re- remastered this. Dude, it looked... I've never seen... Like, it looks perfect. Yeah. And I had not sat down and watched this movie from beginning to end, man, since probably I was maybe 10. It's been that long since I've watched yeah. it. You know, and they, they kept making these other Phantasm movies, and I was like, I meant to stop. But the original one is very interesting. This uh, group of brothers. I can't even tell if they're all... Are there four fucking brothers? Three brothers? Two brothers? Two brothers. There's two brothers. Two brothers. Okay. And an ice cream man. Yeah. A buddy of theirs dies um, because he's doing what you're not supposed to do, which is having sex in a cemetery. That, that's just something that you don't do. It's kind of it's kind of like leaving your children with, <laughs> with yeah, a psychopath like, girlfriend. Well, anyway, and and so the, this younger brother starts seeing like this real tall dude walk around this this mausoleum. I guess. I mean, it's a really odd movie. It's been a very long time. It's it's not really. It's kind of hard to even kind of I toyed, talk about. I toyed watching that movie a couple of times. I would get on it and select it, and then I'm like, ah, I don't know if I have the yeah the time for it right Don now. Don Coscarelli directed it. Angus Scrim was made famous by this role as the tall man and his glorious uh, flying silver balls. Um, which have like spikes on them, and they'll hook into your face and then drill your your brain and, and then like calls like a blood fountain out, out of the front of your face and uh, he basically the tall man takes the recently deceased and he turns them into these well they're like Jawas from Star Wars like the little yeah. midgets he takes your souls and turns them into Jawas and then they're kind of and then like enslaves them on his on his planet right is that right thinking, however you want to look at it yeah 
And sure, yeah. And then good. you know, at the end, they kind of take they they <laughs> they take the tall man down. They basically build like a, a like a booby trap, and he falls in this hole, and then they cover it up with rocks, and they think everything's going to be fine. And I don't know. They're getting ready to go somewhere, and the older of the two brothers is standing in front of the mirror, and the tall man comes through the mirror and grabs him and drags him away, and that's the end of the movie. It's it's very much on par with what we've been watching. This kind of they're horror movies. Like the Void, I would say is a horror movie, but it's a sci-fi movie first. And I think that Phantasm is is mostly labeled a horror movie, but I think it's very sci-fi. It's got a lot of sci-fi elements that kind of goes along with with uh, Housewife and uh, and the Void. So that's the and I like the. And like the void, it's like a, the movie is like a nightmare, right? So it, it's not really supposed to make sense, you know. Like it is what you want you, it to be, yeah. Yeah, exactly. If you try to apply logic to it, it all just falls apart. Yeah, it's like is the movie a dream? That's kind of up to you. Maybe you know. Yeah, exactly. It's right. something. And if you've it's never something. seen, yeah, if you've never seen this movie, I highly, highly recommend it, man. It, remastered like this, an old movie from '79. That the last time I saw it didn't look anything close to this good, man. It's worth it just for for the way it looks. It's ninety minutes. You know. I can't speak. Absolutely, I completely agree. Yeah, I can't speak on any of the sequels because I never watched any of them. The first two are great. First two one sequels, two were, or just no, two yeah, movies. no, uh, part one and two. I got gotcha. you. Okay, are really good. Three and four, you get it's diminishing returns. Yeah, and the last one, Costarelli didn't even direct. But he did the first right. three? First four. Really? There's one that came out a couple years ago called, I can't even remember what it's called, but it's, yeah, he didn't direct that one. Okay. Yeah. So, but I, yeah, I'm a, yeah, I'm a huge Costarella fan. Have you watched this? Uh, oh, I got it on Blu-ray. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Ah, yeah. He's like, I don't need to watch it on Prime. I've got it on this. Well, I just, it, Blu-ray. I saw it because it was like, it was Phantasm from yeah. like 2015. I was like, "Wait a minute, what?" And it's because that's when it was updated. And it looks awesome. It, it really yeah, it does. does. It's good. Uh, yeah. Okay. So good. what's what's up next? Well, I I'm gonna do something. You guys are gonna need to watch some movies before next week because I have been challenged by a friend of mine uh, to rewatch a certain movie that uh, I thought was. Uh, opera of cinema, which was I watched in Los Angeles ve- years and years ago. It's got a running time of four hours and two minutes. Um, the Kenneth Branagh Hamlet. Uh, oh, fuck me, right? <laughs> <laughs> yes! So I'm going to do the Hamlet challenge on Monday, Memorial Day, and I'm going to wa- re-watch that because he thinks that I was an idiot film school student and that this movie's terrible and I'll never make it through. Whereas, when I watched it at the uh, at the sunset, years and years ago, when we got out of it, I said it was an opera of cinema, it was a masterpiece, and I loved it. He thinks I'm full of shit. So I'm going to watch uh, it again. What do you think, Lee? No? You think I'll make it through? Uh, you know, you probably will. Four hours and two minutes. So that's the only movie I'm probably going to be able to get in this week. God. Ugh. And uh, I think I'm going to start researching after this uh, podcast, man. I'm going to start researching this crowdfunding thing. I'm going a, I'm to a figure out a way to crowdfund a short horror film. What do you think? Anybody want to help me write it? <laughs> do you think we could raise... Do you think we could raise forty thousand dollars to make a short horror film? No, not not even. You don't think even if I put together some sort of package, it would take. Well, I mean, f- just what would you need to be enticed with to give somebody money to make a movie, right? Uh, money. <laughs> no, you would have to see. Like you would want to see something that they had done. Yes. So, I've got jobbers, man. I've got two if, empty chairs. If you're gonna go back. Uh-oh. We lost Lee? That's what it says. Hey, sorry, I don't know, man. Uh, Charter, I think, uh, for all you listeners who can't see us, we just lost our internet connection, and I'm not real sure why and how. Uh, 
and I don't know how much longer my Cloud Pro Tools subscription will go without internet, but apparently my charter just went out. Uh, so we're good. Hey, we're so close to the end of this thing, man. We're just going to put you on speakerphone to finish it up. What do you think? That's not good. Okay, cool. So what? It, so so we were discussing the crowdfunding. Yes. So you would. Have, so I would have to make. You're saying that I would have to make. You would have to. I mean, you're just going to give somebody. But I'm saying you would have to show something from them that would be enough for somebody to see it and be like, "Let's give that guy money. He's got talent." Yeah, right. So if you have that in your reel, I do. Then break out your montage of Garrick's best shots, and then maybe you can get it funded. But without something like that, how does it even work? Why would you just give somebody? Well, if we had more listeners on this podcast, we could, you know. Well, that's true. Crowdfund. All right. Well, anyway, that's it. So what's up next? Uh, What what movie we doing next? Are we doing Chud next? Yes. It sounds like we're doing Chud from the sewers. Uh, that'll be up next, uh, and then after that, I can't wait. It's going to be my favorite week ever. Plan nine. It's not too bad. I'm glad to be out of Italy. Are we? Are we all? Can we all say we're glad to be out of Italy? I think we can. Yeah, hundred percent. Hundred percent. Well, that's it for this week. Uh, thanks for listening, and uh, we will see you back next week with the uh, film Chud. Wash your hands. Stay ass in the house. River, thanks for being here, man. Welcome. Two weeks in a row. Hi, this is Lee from the Tales from the Video Store podcast, and thanks so much for listening. (laughs)